everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we are back with another video in our series of sponsored videos from WD, the makers of the WD MyCloud series of network attached storage devices. And uh, today what we're gonna do is talk about the differences between a four drive unit and a two drive unit. They've got a bunch of different choices in their product line. You can check my video above, it's linked uh, to see exactly what all the available models are and what the differences are. But uh, we're gonna focus today on more of a global difference between the four and the two, so you can get a feel for how all this stuff works. I also wanna point you in the direction of my NAS 101 video where I describe some of the basic concepts of how these devices work so you can kind of get a feel uh, coming into this video uh, exactly what I'm talking about because I'm going to cover things that I've already covered in detail in that 101 video so that might give you a better context as to what I'm talking about. Uh, so the, the main difference of course between a four drive and a two drive unit is that you get more capacity uh, on a four drive MyCloud versus a two drive MyCloud. Why? Because you've got two additional drive bays in which to install hard drives into, uh, but you also get two different RAID modes that you don't get uh, on the two drive unit. So the two drive unit covers uh, RAID 0 and RAID 1 for its RAID options, and I've covered what those mean in that 101 video. Uh, the four drive unit will do those modes, but it also adds uh, RAID 5 and RAID 10. And in this video, I'm going to describe what RAID 5 and what RAID 10 are, so you can kind of get a feel as to uh, which mode you should pick. And I'll give you a spoiler, my preference is RAID 10, uh, but yours might differ, and we'll talk about uh, some of those differences right now. Uh, so let's go take a look at my little slideshow here. And what we've got uh, is an example of what a RAID 0 array will look like uh, on one of these MyCloud devices. Now this is what I call scary RAID because what's happening is it's going to uh, basically write across all four drives like so, and just like kind of striping right across. But the problem is, is that uh, if you lose a drive, uh, you lose everything. There's just no way to recover from this because each drive is dependent on the other. Now the advantage of this mode are two things. One is you get a lot of capacity. So I have four four terabyte drives in here that gives me 16 terabytes of capacity, uh, which is really nice. You also get uh, some decent performance out of it too because you basically get the combined speed of uh, all four of those drives because it is just so quickly striping across uh, as it's going. So it can write faster striping than it can uh, writing to an individual drive in a bay. So you do gain those performance advantages, but uh, you have the risk of losing everything uh, even if only one drive goes. So I would suggest uh, not using this mode unless you really know what you're doing and you have a very good backup because uh, this is a very risky way to operate. And I should note too on the performance side that uh, you're really limited to the speed of your network as far as how much uh, data you're going to transfer in and out of these devices. So, you know, one gigabit per second is what you'll get theoretically on your network if you do have it plugged into gigabit ethernet and your client, the computer that connects to it, uh, is also on gigabit ethernet. That is not a gigabyte, that is a gigabit, which means you're only getting about 100 or so megabytes per second in transfer performance, which is a lot slower than what you would get with a high performance drive like an SSD or something hooked up directly to your computer with its internal uh, hard drive SATA connection. So a lot of the performance gains are really not going to be realized over your network, at least at the current state of networking technology. So again, avoid RAID 0 if you can. So now let's take a look at RAID 5. And RAID 5 is a mode that is unique to the four drive unit. It is not available on the two drive unit. Now like RAID 0, it's also going to stripe across all four disks and you get uh, a really decent amount of performance, especially when you are reading data because again, you're able to uh, stripe across as opposed to reading off of one drive uniquely. Uh, and what it also does in RAID 5 is that it adds a protection layer, which basically takes up a quarter of each hard drive uh, in your system. And that is kind of like a backup layer. So what it's doing is uh, reserving a portion of space so that if a drive were to go, uh, you will have the ability to at least not lose all the data that you've stored across it. So it's kind of like a safer uh, RAID 0 to some degree. Uh, and what that means is that you're going to only get, uh, in this case, 12 terabytes versus 16, because it's basically taking the equivalent uh, of a full disk and using that as backup space, but it's distributing that backup across the uh, other three drives. So basically each drive is kind of backing up to the other one. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's kind of how it works. Now, if one of the drives goes, uh, goes up in flames here, uh, you can then uh, grab those parity partitions and be able to reconstruct the data that uh, was on that disk. So you have the ability to have some, uh, some means of recovering from some kind of disk loss in here, but this is a little bit riskier because uh, when you're in that mode, it's first of all gonna run a lot slower. You're not protecting any new data that you're writing to the drive properly. And 
uh, you're also you know, run the risk of having another drive failure and then losing everything. So you have a lot of uh, additional risk here, uh, although you do gain uh, some space that you won't have in the next mode I'm going to talk about. So you get decent performance, uh, better performance on reads than on writes because uh, when you write to the disk, you ha it does have to do some calculation to develop that backup that it's writing across uh, the other disks in the array. So you are going to get a little bit of a performance hit on writing data in, uh, especially when you've got a lot of little files going back and forth for databases and that sort of thing. So this is really uh, best tuned for reading data, media playback, and that sort of thing, uh, less so for uh, writing data. Now the next mode is RAID 10, which uh, is very similar to the other modes, but it adds some additional protection layers. So what it's going to do is take your four drives uh, and split them into two. And what it's going to do is stripe across uh, two drives, very similar to how the RAID 0 mode works, uh, just kind of striping across the two here. But what it's also going to do is mirror whatever is getting written to these two drives to these two. So you have the ability to uh, have a very you know exact backup running all the time of one of these uh, uh, groups of disks to the other. So again, this is going to mirror to here and you gain uh, some performance advantages of having a RAID 0 array to some degree uh, with the protection of knowing that everything is being duplicated to another set of drives. However, uh, that cuts your space down significantly. So we had, when we started in that RAID 0 mode, we had 16 terabytes of effective space because we had four, four terabyte drives. Uh, now we're down to eight terabytes because we're only able to store the total of two drives because we're mirroring one set of drives to the other. But you could lose two drives in one of the arrays here and still be perfectly fine because the other two uh, had a mirrored copy of that data. Now that's going to be an odd thing to happen where two drives on the same array get lost at once, but there is a theoretical ability to lose two drives uh, and not be in trouble. However, you run into more trouble though because again, we're striping across all these different disks that uh, if you were to lose one on each array, uh, you would run into a little bit more complexity there. So of the options available for RAID on here, I do think that RAID 10 is your safest bet. It does give you good performance. Uh, that protection it gives you though comes at the expense of overall capacity. So you want to make sure that when you're uh, buying the device, you're calculating properly. So whatever uh, is on the label, you need to divide that by two. So if you bought an eight terabyte unit, uh, you would have four terabytes of effective space in RAID 10 because again, you're taking uh, half of that uh, capacity away as redundancy, but uh, that is the safest way, in my opinion, to run one of these things. Uh, but there is never any substitute for a backup, but a backup. So make sure uh, you have a backup on your drive at all times and are running it on a continuous basis. And the nice thing is there are uh, some really good ways to automate that process of backing up. So that is my brief explainer of uh, some of the different RAID levels available on the four bay uh, drive versus the two bay drive. If you can swing it, it's definitely a better uh, way to go with a quad drive unit, you get better capacity and better data redundancy. Uh, so if you can afford one, uh, I would look at that. And again, you can check out my video to see how the uh, DL4100 differs from the EX4100. This is Lon Seib, and I want to thank WD for sponsoring this series of videos. And I'd love to know what you think. And if you have additional questions, uh, please definitely leave them in the comments below. This is Lon Seib, and thanks for watching.